Welcome to the Pleasant Green Missionary Baptist Church Sunday School. I'm Minister Cedric Harden and I am presenting Lesson 4 for June the 27th, 2021. We're still in Unit 1 entitled, Jesus Teaches About Faith. And our topic for today, taken from the Adult Quarterly, is An Amazing Feat. Our devotion reading is taken from uh, the book of Isaiah, chapter 38, verses 16 through 20. Our background scripture is taken from the Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 14, uh, verses 22 through 33. And our print passage today, uh, where our lesson will come from, is also uh, taken from Matthew, chapter 14, verses 22 through 33. Our key verse reads, Immediately Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You of little faith, he said, why did you doubt? That's taken from Matthew chapter 14, verse 31 from the NIV translation. Our lesson aims today, number one, is to recall the amazing story of the storm at sea, followed by Jesus' appearance walking on the water. Secondly, to repent of your failure to trust in God when caught up in a crisis. And then thirdly, to develop habits of trust that enable you to overcome your doubt about God's care. We have three outlines today that will be a part of our lesson. The first outline is entitled, Disaster Comes. Second outline is entitled, Divinity Comes. And then the third outline is entitled, Doubt Comes. And so we certainly thank and praise God for this opportunity to share God's word with you through our Sunday School lesson. Uh, we certainly want to encourage you to uh, get your Bible and be prepared to uh, take some notes and some scripture reference that we're going to share with you today. We have quite a bit to cover. So we want to get into this uh, lesson today from the Gospel according to Matthew uh, chapter 14 verses 22 through 33. Uh, the biblical context for this lesson is as follows. John the Baptist had just been beheaded and his disciples went to Jesus to take him the news as taken from uh, Matthew chapter 14 verses 1 through 12. Upon hearing the news Jesus withdrew to an isolated place, likely to spend time alone in reflection and grief over the loss of his cousin. When the crowds found out where Jesus was, they went to him. Seeing them, he had compassion on them and began to heal them. Being sensitive to the crowd's spiritual and physical needs, Jesus multiplied five loaves and two fish and fed the large crowd until they were satisfied. But the storm uh, rescue in, Math in Matthew 14 was the second time Jesus spared his disciples from a potential uh, boating disaster on the Sea of Galilee. You can see that in Matthew chapter 8 uh, verses 23 through 27. So defying natural law, Jesus went to the disciples walking on water by faith, Peter was able to walk on water toward Jesus. He succeeded as long as he trusted Jesus uh, that it was possible. When Peter allowed fear to override his faith, he began to sink. Jesus immediately rescued Peter, but chided him for his wavering faith. There are a couple points I want to make about uh, the gospel according to Matthew. Of course, we know it is a Jewish gospel. Uh, and I want to take you back to Matthew chapter 5. There's just two points I want us to keep in our minds as we think about this lesson today that's exclusive to Matthew uh, concerning Jesus walking on, on the water. But the first point if you would very quickly I want to go to Matthew chapter 5 you will recall uh, this Sermon on the Mount uh, this is from uh, taken from Matthew chapter 5 verse 20 
but the sermon takes place from the fifth chapter of Matthew until the seventh chapter of Matthew and there's something I want to lift here because I want us to understand that uh, Jesus uh, has been focusing on where these Jews are in terms of uh, their uh, uh, faith uh, but in Matthew chapter 5 verse 20 and this is Jesus speaking here he says for I say to you that unless your righteousness exceeds the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees you will by no means enter the kingdom of, of heaven uh, and it will make sense to you as we go along and then secondly as we move to our lesson text today uh, the four, from the 14th chapter of the book of Matthew I want us to realize that the intent uh, Jesus intent to move the Jews uh, beyond their mere religious externalism uh, is not and should not be lost uh, uh, because uh, in the 14th chapter we should realize that in Jesus ministry he has already uh, been experiencing uh, rejection. Uh, he has been experiencing rejection in his ministry since the 11th chapter of Matthew and this rejection of of who he is and what he is uh, 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 speaking and preaching and teaching is going to extend all the way to the 28th chapter of Matthew and that's very important uh, that we understand these two key points about Matthew and as we see uh, in this lesson today Jesus is still working with his disciples from the standpoint of where they are in their faith uh, uh, and how he can move them further uh, further than uh, uh, the, the scribes and, and the Pharisees further than just just the religious order of the day but more of an internal perspective uh, uh, about who they are in terms of their walk with him and that's key because as we deal with this faith uh, we're going to learn that 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 the gospel message brings about struggle uh, uh, the gospel message brings about conflict uh, and we will see that today and so for all of us that 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 say we are Christians and that we have faith I want us to think about the fact that that has to be tested whatever it is however much faith you say or you believe you have that has to be tried that has to be proven and so we really don't get a good gauge of where we are in terms of our walk with the Lord until conflict comes, until struggle comes, or in this case of this lesson passage, disaster comes. And this is taken from uh, Matthew uh, chapter 14 verses 22 through 24. But Jesus asks a key question here. Uh, uh, in the key verse from the 14th chapter verse 31 and we'll get there he asked Peter why did you doubt and sometimes uh, uh, we don't really know we have to deal with fear doubt anxiety mistakes all of these things are, are, are part of our uh, human nature if you will uh, but but Jesus is, is probing uh, 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 Peter beyond uh, uh, his external posture of being a disciple because Peter is struggling inside Peter is struggling in his faith and this is why he is doubting but we'll get to some points that I want to lift and I don't want us to be discouraged about where we are because all of us as children of God, disciples, followers of Jesus Christ, we're in a process. You are in a process. I am in a process. Uh, and so uh, God is doing different things in our lives to bring us where he would have us to be, though we are all disciples. I hope that makes sense uh, to you today. I want to read this from the NIV translation, Matthew chapter 14, beginning at verse 22. 
the Bible says immediately Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to the other side while he dismissed the crowd after he had dismissed them he went up on a mountainside by himself to pray later that night he was there alone verse 24 and the boat was already uh, a considerable distance from land buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it I want us to think about the fact that these disciples have been following Jesus uh, uh, they have been walking they have been experiencing they have been uh, 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 looking in on the miracles that Jesus has performed but but now they have uh, been separated if you will Jesus uh, goes up on the mountainside they go out on the water in the boat so they are not together at this point walk with me church uh, because I want us to see that following Jesus uh, uh, sometimes we feel that we are alone that he's not with us uh, and this is where uh, 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 physically they are separated the disciples are separated uh, 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 from Jesus but when Jesus finished ministering to the crowd he instructed his disciples to set sail for the other side of the sea where he would later meet them apparently the disciples did not question how Jesus would meet them on the other side perhaps they assumed he would join uh, uh, another boater uh, uh, headed in the same direction but while the disciples were on their way uh, uh, Jesus sent the multitude of people away and retreated to the mountain by himself to pray solitary prayer was a common routine for Jesus and as the disciples sailed across the sea disaster came in the form of heavy waves and contrary winds that beat against the boat and made the journey difficult. I want to pause right there. This has happened to all of us. Uh, 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 that, that issues, disasters, trials, tribulations come and we begin to uh, uh, feel like uh, uh, that we are all alone in this situation and this happens to us right and so uh, uh, this account uh, uh, just pivots us into a broader context of a spiritual walk with Jesus Christ this is a physical encounter and so we can't really appreciate this as the disciples did at that time but we can appreciate it spiritually walking with Jesus uh, 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 and following Jesus, following the Word of God, following what we have been uh, taught to do, uh, but we feel like that there's a separation, and then uh, uh, some disaster or trials or winds start blowing against our faith. Keep in mind, uh, these disciples were on a different level when they were with Jesus. Their faith was not questioned at that time. But now that they have been separated, uh, their faith is now being scrutinized. I want us to see this uh, uh, because what happens a lot of times uh, is certainly it, it, it's God's character that his will has to be done in our lives. And sometimes uh, God allows things to take place. It doesn't say here that Jesus prevented these uh, winds and this 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 disaster if you will uh, uh, or this this uncomfortable situation from happening to his disciples it was allowed right Jesus uh, obviously knew about this situation but he allowed the winds to beat against the boat and it made the journey for the disciples difficult this is where our faith, when I was thinking about this lesson and meditating on this lesson and looking at this from a spiritual sense, and this is where uh, uh, a lot of us uh, and a lot of times we struggle because 
we don't understand why these winds were allowed in the first place. We don't, uh, 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 we're not given to understand why the heavy waves, right, uh, 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 beat against uh, uh, this journey, against this boat, and it made the journey difficult. Why do we have to go through difficult situations to get to where God wants us to be? Uh, uh, b because that faith has to be tried. There was a woman some years ago that I grew up around as a child. Uh, she was a very powerful evangelist. Uh, and one of the things that I remember her saying all the time, even as a boy, she would say, uh, if the word of God is not tried and proven in your life, that it is worth nothing. And I never understood that at the time. And she said that over the years. And so now as I begin to walk with the Lord, I understand that I have a, a measure of faith, but, but it has to be tried and it has to be proven these waves and this 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 uh, contrary wind if you will is going to develop uh, 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 these disciples is going to bring them to a place that God wants them to be and you'll see that as we go along in this lesson today but the question is asked have you ever had a storm to appear in your life just having just after having a miraculous experience with Jesus and so we all have had the sunshine if you will in our lives but suddenly winds come uh, trials come and beat against our walk and what happens to us it exposes our faith in a way that we couldn't appreciate before when the sun was shining I hope this is making sense to you today and so we tend to gloat and to boast about who we are when the sun is shining but now the winds have come and that's when the real faith that's when the uh, 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 the proof, if you will, in the pudding is 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 really seen uh, 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 in, in our faith and in our walk. And keep in mind, as I said to you early in from the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew chapter five, uh, Jesus is looking for people and preaching to people who need to be better than the Pharisees and the scribes who have a mere a, a form of religious order or uh, they are, they are, uh, 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 seem to be covered in externalism they seem to have that down pat but when uh, the faith is tested uh, uh, then that's a different matter and see and so Jesus says in that sermon if you recall unless your righteousness your right standing with God exceeds how can it exceed except that our faith is tried and proven and it is worthy of of uh, uh, of those who say they are disciples in Jesus Christ and they will stay with him no matter what the circumstances are but we'll see a little bit more as we go along our second outline is entitled uh, uh, divinity comes and this is taken from Matthew chapter 14 verses 25 through 30 again from the NIV translation uh, shortly after dawn Jesus went out to them walking on the lake uh, when the disciples saw him walking on the lake they were terrified it's a ghost they said and cried out in fear but Jesus immediately said to them take courage it is I don't be afraid verse 28 Lord if if it's you Peter replied tell me to come to you on the water I just want to pause right here uh, 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 these individuals have now these disciples they they, they uh, uh, have spotted Jesus walking on the water and now they are terrified right and so they they are terrified and they are experiencing fear you know these kind of uh, 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 characteristics if you will they sort of work in tandem when we don't feel Jesus around us 
Uh, we have to deal with doubt. That will come a little bit later in the text. We have to deal with fear. And I should tell you uh, upon dealing with, with terror and fear, we also have to deal with anxiety. Right? And so all of these things are coming against our faith. And the more that I thought about this, and we'll share some scripture with you a little bit later on, but having faith, we need to have it, but faith has to be kept. And in terms of keeping the faith, there will be struggle. There will be a literal fight, as Paul uh, would say to Timothy. Uh, but we all react differently. And so I began to go back and look at uh, Matthew chapter 13. And you should look at that at your leisure uh, and just look at that parable uh, about the sower and the different uh, 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 reactions, if you will, uh, uh, to the Word of God. Uh, uh, but, but as we read the Word of God and as we study the Word of God, there will always be conflict concerning the Word of God simply because the enemy does not want you to be informed. You will notice this uh, and it sometimes is very pronounced when it's time for us to pray and when it's time for us to read the Word of God uh, and study the Word of God, we experience conflict. We, is, we experiencing uh, uh, all of these different uh, 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 frustrations, if you will, all of these distractions, a better word, uh, that we see coming into our uh, sphere as we began to try to draw closer to, to the Lord. And so uh, uh, if we are not convicted, you know, this has nothing to do with uh, 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 personally, uh, quote unquote, how we quote scripture, right? We can quote scripture, but we must be convicted by the scriptures that we quote. And, and, and the trial and the test will be to see if you are the doubt, the fear, the anxiety, and all of these other things that these negative attributes that come uh, 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 alongside of the Word of God will try your faith to see if you are really convicted by what you are quoting. I hope that makes sense for you today. And you will see that uh, uh, over in Matthew chapter 13 because uh, uh, over there it talks about uh, when the tests and trials come because of the Word of God, right? Because of the Word of God, then we start to experiencing uh, this conflict and then we start to change. Uh, and I think it's very important even for us as uh, 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 church leaders is to help those new converts to understand that there will be conflict. Uh, uh, it is a blessing to be saved. Uh, it's a blessing to give your life to Christ, but it comes at a cost. And many times when we start experiencing hardship, uh, we leave the church. We leave uh, the, uh, the walk with the Lord. We quit, right? Just as Peter did in a different context when uh, uh, Jesus was arrested uh, 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 and, and, and those who came to to say that Peter was with Jesus and Peter denied uh, uh, being with Christ, right? Three times. Uh, he says, I don't know him. I wasn't with him because he did not want to experience uh, uh, what Christ was experiencing. So he denied him because of the trial, because of the, the heated battle of what was getting ready to take place. Peter wanted no part of it. So but I wanted to focus in on uh, 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 this passage here uh, uh, verses. Uh, they were terrified when they saw Jesus walking. They thought it was a ghost. Uh, and they cried out in fear. And Jesus had to calm them down uh, in verse 27. Uh, uh, because he knew they were in trouble. Right? They were in spiritual trouble because had he not spoken into them uh, and they be uh, uh, convicted by these, uh, uh, by his word and by his encouragement, they would have been overcome with fear. They would have been overcome with terror, right? And, and anxiety is 
is is running right alongside of all of this right so uh, because they don't understand what they're looking at they don't understand this kind of revelation and so the the the, the human thing to do is to be afraid right and to uh, 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 and to be concerned about this thing in a way uh, that would not help their faith right but I, I want to look at verse 28 and this is this is key uh, because they still don't understand but Peter speaks out and he said Lord if it's you if is a condition is a conditional word he does not know but he speaks ahead anyway and he replied uh, Peter replies he said tell me to come to you on the water right verse 29 Jesus says come he said then Peter got out of the boat and walked on the water and came toward Jesus something I saw here since Peter does not really know not fully convicted where is his faith in this situation and we'll see that a little bit later in, in, the, in the text right but he is not Peter is not prepared or he is not thoroughly convicted by faith right of what he is asking Christ for he is not right and that is clear right verse 30 says but when he saw the wind right he was afraid and beginning to sink he cried out Lord save me Peter was not prepared he was not convinced he was not convicted he was not sure right of his request to Jesus and this is where uh, our faith right gets tested many times we ask God for things that we are not prepared we are not convicted right we're not convinced that 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 he will do this thing that he is capable of doing these things uh, and so Peter is learning some things on two fronts number one he has to learn more about Jesus Christ and the second thing he is learning is about himself he is able to see himself right because it's clear he saw something he he felt something he saw the wind the text says and he began to fear fear uh, uh, gripped his faith whatever measure of faith he had that struggle between his faith or his conviction and the wind was 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 a battle right what am I saying trials when we see trials we react how do we react do we do we trust God or do we become uh, overcome or overwhelmed by what we see right it's very important for us to understand and I, I want us to be clear and as I said earlier I don't want you to be discouraged about this I want you to look at uh, Hebrews chapter 12 verses 1 and 2 very familiar passage uh, and what I love about that passage it talks about Jesus being the author and the finisher of our faith he initiates the belief the faith in him and then he is able to bring the faith to maturity right where it's supposed to be and none of us have quote unquote arrived we're not super Christians I'm not aware of any super Christians right because truth of the matter is we really don't know where we are until that faith has to go into the fire and then how long does it stay in the fire some trials last five minutes two weeks right ten days what about that trial that lasts two years five years 20 years right how long do we 
and have we been praying about a particular matter that God has not cleared up and what do we do about that right so our faith is in a process God has moved it into his own process and he is bringing us where he would have us to be and clearly Peter at this at this juncture he is not ready to walk on water right he is not ready to launch out into the deep he's still a follower he's still a disciple but he has not matured to what he is asking Christ for right because in this case fear won the battle and there are many times that fear wins the battle right that we're not where we should be in Christ and I'm going to share with you what you can do about that because this is personal for me as I am sharing it with you I'm not, I don't want to uh, uh, make you believe that I'm I'm some kind of graduate student uh, uh, in terms of my faith I am not right and so the very same conflict uh, uh, that that you share or that you have I have that same conflict and truth be told I have lost those some of those battles over the course of the years uh, I wasn't as strong but God made me uh, 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 able right this is something Paul talked about in 2 Corinthians chapter 12 verses 7 through 10 there's absolutely nothing wrong with weaknesses right because God is able to maneuver and to work with us in terms of our weakness what I would encourage you to do about your weaknesses if it's doubt if it's fear if it's terror if it's anxiety that's something you need to talk to God about in your secret closet right this is a matter that you don't want to cover up because it's going to continue to happen right if we don't uh, 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 find within ourselves to say Lord help my unbelief if we don't find within ourselves to say Lord I'm struggling in a particular area of my life I'm struggling uh, uh, I don't want to come across as a super Christian when I know I have weaknesses right because those will be exposed by trial and depending on what God is doing and his will for your life right it could be prolonged until you are developed into what God would have you to be one of the things that I saw uh, in this lesson uh, as we talked about the biblical context it says the storm rescue in Matthew 14 was the second time right Jesus spared his disciples from a potential boating disaster on the Sea of Galilee that's in Matthew chapter 8 verses 23 through 37 so we should never feel like that God is not going to have to come to our rescue again right and so I think we need to be transparent with people, transparent with converts, transparent with our brothers and sisters in Christ, and embrace them, right? Even though they have weaknesses, and we have to work with people until they, uh, 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 until they are developed, until they stop wavering, right? being tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine. I hope this is making sense to you, church. But it's clear Peter has some issues. The question is asked, sometimes we do not recognize the Lord when he shows up to bless us. Share a time when you initially questioned or rejected what turned out to be a blessing in disguise. This happens all the time right our initial reaction is different right so we need God's help divinity comes I, I love this topic 
because that's that's our expectation this is where our hope rests in what God's going to do what Jesus is doing here uh, uh, for these disciples is what we expect him to do in our lives every single day the last outline is entitled doubt comes this is taken from Matthew chapter 14 verses 31 through 33 and again from the NIV translation immediately Jesus reached out his hand and caught him you of little faith he said why did you doubt and when they climbed into the boat the wind died down then those who were in the boat worshipped him saying truly you are the son of God as I said earlier fighting the good fight of faith I want you to look at first Timothy chapter 6 verse 12 and then also second Timothy chapter 4 verse 7 All right immediately Jesus came to Peter's aid and caught him but he rebuked Peter right he didn't hug him didn't kiss him didn't congratulate him he censured him he rebuked him you of little faith and he asked Peter a probing question which is one that we need to answer why do we doubt what's going on with us that we are not convict, convicted or convinced of what God is capable of doing in the hottest trial of your life in the hottest trial of my life I'm not sure if the Lord is going to deliver me I think one of the things uh, 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 that causes this is that we have a certain expectation of what we want and sometimes uh, uh, we question if God is going to do it the way we want him to do it versus the way he is going to do it and it causes us as Peter did he wanted to walk on water right he want we don't we're not given in the text why he chose to do that why he wanted that but that's what he wanted that was his request and he was not ready right so this is what I mean sometimes we want things a certain way he 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 mapped it out right tell me to come to you on the water that's what he wanted Jesus said all right come on step out but he was not ready to step out and thank God for divinity coming to his aid because he could have perished he could have drowned trying to ask for something or receive something that he wasn't ready for and we doubt right because of the process the process has to run its course and we need to let that run its course where we are convicted right by the Holy Spirit according to John chapter 16 there is a whole section of the work of the Holy Ghost that I encourage you to read right but we don't get any more information as to what Peter said how he responded to the doubt question or what he thought about it but from a biblical standpoint right he was not convicted he was not convinced James says something in the first chapter right of his epistle he says he who wavers and doubts should not think that he will receive 
anything from the Lord. You know, words matter to God. Our intent matters to God. Our motives matter to God. So we can put it out there, God, I want this and I want that. But thank God that he says no sometimes, right? That he declines to do what we ask him to do. And the reason why, one of the reasons why is because of this in this text. We are not ready for what we are asking God for. How do we get ready? That's a very good question. We have to go through God's process. His will is perfect. His desires will be accomplished no matter what we think about it. He knows how to develop us. That's why I gave you Hebrews chapter 12. It talks about Jesus being the author and the finisher. Right? He is the one, he is the only one who can bring us to the place, right, that we need to be. But we need to do our due diligence in studying the Word of God because the enemy works through fear, doubt and anxiety and we experience these things we hear these things in our spirit instead of rebuking them we entertain them and they overwhelm us and 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 many times it overwhelms the very scripture that we quoted because we did not have that spirit that 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 scripture in our spirit in our heart in our mind we just blurted it out right as Peter did he just blurted it out tell me to come to you Jesus and I will tell me to walk on this water and I and I'll do it Jesus says all right let's see let's see if you're going to keep your word keep your faith in me keep your trust in me see if those things line up and it wasn't long before he stepped out of that water and an experience or a trial or a wind blew. First wind. He's crying out. I don't knock Peter for that. Right? I'm learning from Peter. I'm learning from this text. Right? I'm learning about faith. I'm learning about what it means to not just have the faith but to keep the faith and then to fight or contend, if you will, for the faith, right? That you'll see in Jude verse 3, contending for the faith. So I hope, trust, and pray that God won't stop saving you. God won't stop saving me when we cry out. But this lesson is a mirror for us today to look at, to look into it, and to ask ourselves the question. Peter was asked, right, by the Lord Jesus, why do you doubt? But if Jesus were to ask you or to ask me, why do you doubt, what would you say? If Jesus were to ask you or to ask me, what are you doing about your weaknesses? What would you say? How would you respond? If Jesus was, was to say to you or to me, are you prepared for what you are asking me for? What would you say? These are the questions that this lesson lifts for us today. So again, I hope, trust, and pray that I've given you something to think about, at least put you on the scripture path to help you understand that we have to fight the good fight of faith. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for this lesson today, for what it revealed, for what it spoke to us. 
for what it said to us on a personal level and on a corporate level. Father, for everyone under the sound of my voice, I pray that this lesson strikes at the heart of their faith today, so much so that they would call on you, not just about their strengths, but about their weaknesses. God, help our unbelief. In the name of Jesus, help us to keep the faith. All of us are experiencing various trials in our lives. Some have lingered on for years. And it seems like you have not answered our prayers. Father, give us the courage to persevere. Help us to understand that you don't count days as we do. You don't count time as we do. But help us to be encouraged today. That, that we would endure as good soldiers. I lift up families today who are struggling. I lift up leaders today who are struggling. I lift up the body of Christ today. Wherever our weaknesses are, God, we know you're able to stretch forth your mighty hand and save us because you see us sinking into things that we shouldn't be sinking into. But because we're not convicted and convinced of your word and we haven't even talked to you about it, we are sinking. Forgive us of our weaknesses in the mighty name of Jesus and strengthen us where we need to be strengthened. Build us up wherever we may be torn down in the name of Jesus. Father, and help us to have a better appreciation for your word. Help us to hold fast to these truths. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So again, until such time that the Lord will permit us to come together again, we say God bless you.